It's verboten. They have signs telling you so. What does Dienstag's Textil Frei mean? These tips are deadly serious. I don't joke as much. Today's video is an unusual format for my channel. The results of the poll about the north and the south of Germany are in. And I'll make my next video about that and show you two wonderful places in Germany. But now for something completely different. Firstly, let's take a look at how Germany has changed me. In Britain, I was considered earnest, ernsthaft. But in Germany, the same behaviour is considered unseriös, frivolous, and dare I say it, a bit untrustworthy. I just have to fill you in on this. I just pulled out of a junction to turn left and someone let me out and then someone let me go over the road as well and I only thanked the one three times and the other person twice. It's so exhausting being British. As a consequence I have changed my behaviour. Two main things have happened. Despite appearances I don't joke as much and I've stopped smiling at strangers. Smiling at strangers used to have an unfortunate effect. I think men thought I was flirting and possibly more unfortunately, their wives did too. And because continuing with behavior that's considered completely normal, friendly and harmless in your country of origin can really affect your life in your new country. Five tips on how to integrate in Germany. These tips are deadly serious. My first tip is for dealing with being in an F-car car sauna. That means Freikörperkultur. Naked. Not even a swimsuit. It's verboten. They have signs telling you so. This is terrifying and exhilarating at the same time for us Brits. We feel outrageous, daring and terribly, terribly embarrassed. I never planned on ever going to one. But I was with my then boyfriend who tricked me. I mean, who made a mistake. He accidentally took me on a Tuesday to Bad Kloster Lausnitz, the thermal baths at Kloster Lausnitz. And he gave it a big build up. Sauna Landschaft, a sauna paradise. And I remember seeing a sign and not speaking very much German at the time and saying, what does Dienstag's Textil Frei mean? So, I grasped the bull by the horns and I went into this naked sauna day. And I discovered a trick to help me deal with this. I simply took out my contact lens. I figured if I can't see anyone else, they can't see me. My second tip is just for the Brits. You must learn to drink tea like this. You order it in a cafe and they bring you a glass of hot, no longer boiling water and a tea bag next to it, still dry. And then when it's on your table, you put the tea bag into the no longer boiling water. Every British person understands my pain now. So my tip is choose fruit tea or better still coffee. The Germans are really very good at coffee. My third tip is another one for the Brits. Get used to this. It doesn't matter if it's raining or snowing, the thing will happen anyway. School, work, you name it. But wear the right clothes for whatever the weather and you'll be fine. My fourth tip is learn to be precise. It's 12 minutes to three, not 10 to even in casual conversation. Oh, and you need to know the population count of where you're from and where you live now, precisely. My fifth tip to avoid feeling a huge culture clash, 
don't bother complaining about bad customer service. The saying, the customer is always right, has an equivalent here. Der Kunde ist König, the customer is king, but it's wishful thinking. The customer cannot be king because the ruler is the rule book, at least in the really big businesses. You will meet really helpful and lovely and friendly people in kind of small, small cafes, small shops, local stores. They're really nice and human and they'll help you and go out of their way. But these poor people in the big concerns, their hands are tied. And here is my bonus tip for integrating in Germany. Realize that Germany is not just Bavaria, even though it's absolutely wonderful in Bavaria and it offers everything you could possibly need to live a wonderful life or have an amazing holiday. But venture out and you will be surprised at what the rest of Germany has to offer. Now I know that a lot of my viewers are German. You guys have really changed my life here by commenting and sharing your thoughts here on YouTube. So please do keep, keep doing that. It's absolutely wonderful for me. And that's why I have three tips for Germans going on holiday to Britain. I must of course quickly ask you to subscribe if you haven't done so already. It really helps my channel out. Also hitting the like button for the video and leaving comments as said, that's mainly the moral support, but all of it really helps my channel to survive. I really want to keep showing you amazing places in Germany like... This is the star of next week's video and I've already shared these wonderful places. But here is my first tip for Germans visiting Britain. Smile more for no reason. I know it might feel odd for you. Why should I do this? Will people think I'm insane? But it offsets a lot of the preconceptions that people have in Britain about Germans. The German direct way of speaking isn't just about what you say, but also the inflection. And that's not quite so easy to change. I promise you, a smile is more important than saying please. Tip number two, my dear German tourists in Britain, learn to talk about the weather very, very casually. We Brits can feel awkward just standing in silence, like in a queue at a petrol station or waiting to pay for a pint at the bar in the pub. We take it personally if you don't exchange a couple of words with us. Just say, nice weather for ducks if it's raining and nice out, isn't it? If it's not, you'll be sorted. Oh, and don't forget to implement tip number one at the same time. If you can't do both, choose tip number one. That'll cover you for just about everything. Now, here is my third tip for a German person visiting Britain. If somebody bumps into you, apologize. Yes, you apologize. We Brits apologize for being there in the way when someone bumps into us. And you too get a bonus tip, my Deutsche Freunde. When we Brits come to Germany, we are told, seriously, don't mention the war. And now it's your turn. Please don't mention the Brexit.